Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth In Story, and uh, this is actually, we're going into a month, 30 days or so, of videos all surrounding Lenormand most, mostly, um, as, and I'll have another video about this, but kind of working with uh, pre-orders with my new Story and Color Lenormand deck, and people needing to wait for <laughs> said pre-orders, I thought it would be fun to be doing some things while we wait uh, to make it go quicker. Um, um, so there'll be lots of Lenormand going on um, for the next 30 days. Uh, but I wanted to start with a, with a little video that, not start, because I'm going to do another video, but one of the videos I wanted to do today was um, of card counting methods. Now, um, because I really love uh, doing it, and you can use it with Lenormand, but first I'm going to show you the way that I mostly use it. So... I do Kipper readings. I love Kipper readings and I do them in my shop, but I don't generally use Kipper the same way that I use Lenormand. So I don't just, I mean, sometimes I will do a nine card Kipper. <laughs> Not really. I said, I started to say that I'm thinking I can't even think of the last, maybe when I was first using Kipper, I did. I can't remember. I really don't. Um, I unless somebody requests a nine card and they ask me to use a Kipper deck, I don't generally use, and I don't do Grand Tableau. I have done Grand Tableaus with Kipper, uh, but I um, generally don't. I generally do Lenormand. Uh, sometimes people request the Kipper, but for me, Kipper is about card counting, and that's just the aspect I personally love about it. Uh, so that's how I use it. So some people um, might ask that are watching this, what's the difference between, what is Kipper? What's the difference between Kipper and Lenormand? So I should have another Lenormand deck, but this is more of a gypsy witch, which we can put over here to talk about. So Lenormand uh, is a 36 card deck um, that came about in the early 1800s, 1830s, uh, and um, is based on sort of the images and things that you would see, would have seen before in coffee grounds and tea readings. Um, so they're very simple uh, figures such as a house or a fox or a bear or a, a sun or a moon, right, or a star, uh, really basic shapes that you know, begin to take on meanings and kind of symbols, just as all, all cardamancy is. Um, so, for example, this is the maybe Lenormand, which has Lenormand cards, and then it has extra cards, so it's a 52-card deck. So it's a little bit more along the lines of, like, the Gypsy Witch, because it has extra cards. But they were based on cards, and then, of course, in that, in Germany, in that time period, they use a, and still do, use a 32-card, 32, 36-card deck. So, for example, with Lenormand, it doesn't use, as a German system, it didn't use, uh, it used a 36-card deck, playing card deck. So you'll notice in this deck, which is the maybe Lenormand, other than the aces, it used the aces, but the twos, threes, twos, these are not in the traditional Lenormand. So you'll see that all these twos, threes, and fours are cards that are different than the traditional Lenormand, right? So it's based on a 36-card deck. So that's what Lenormand is. Uh, Kipper is a, a 32, uh, a 36 card deck as well. And uh, this now, the Fin de Sickle, which is the one that I primarily use, which is by Chiro Marchetti, uh, is, uh, has three additional cards in it, uh, which I do leave in because I quite like them. Um, but it is very similar in the style of reading to Lenormand, but it has more people. You'll see a lot more people. There's the false person. Um, you will see the main female. You'll see his thoughts. You'll see her thoughts, which was expectations. I think we already passed. Um, you will see uh, a young, probably, no, we're not going to have them to show up, right, when we want them. You'll see a wealthy man and a wealthy woman. You'll see an older man and an older woman, so a mature man, a female, official person, a mature man. Here we have the main female, the main man. We have the wealthy man and the rich girl, which may be the witch girl. She, they change a couple of the names. Here's the privileged lady. So we have the mature couple. We have the younger privileged people. We have the main people. We have a false person. We have an official person, uh, and so on. And expectations, her, his thoughts, her thoughts. I think that's 
<laughs> I think we got them all. Uh, but you see there's more people than just the main female and the main male or the woman, man and woman in the Lenormand. Now, there are more people in Lenormand using the playing card inserts, but in terms of just the actual uh, main cards themselves, there's more people in uh, Kipper than there are... Um, in Lenormand. Uh, but other than that, you read them very similarly. Uh, you use directionality and proximity and all of that uh, very similarly. So they are kind of, uh, to my opinion, kind of side by side, kind of follow the same path. They just, I mean, they, and they do feel quite different. I'm going off onto a random thing. Um, but the way that I learned to um, use Kipper uh, was from a wonderful guy who used to have a YouTube channel that was really all about Lenormand and Kipper. And his name was, I don't know how to say it, pronounce it correctly. He was a German uh, man, Mike Michael, it looked like. And he had a great YouTube channel full of information that has since been taken down, which I feel is just such a loss to the information out there because he was like the third generation you know, um, Lenormand and Kip Kipper reader from his family, you know, kind of handing down things. And so he taught uh, what was uh, called the master, uh, master, not the master method, there is something else called the master method, but um, he talks about how the, the Kipper deck has um, master cards. Um, I'm trying to pull it up here in my little white book here. Uh, so there are 11, plus I've added one of the extra cards for this deck in, because it, it works well that way. Um, but there are 11 master cards. So I have a, I have a video on this, so I'm not going to go in depth on how to read this way. I'll put a link to it in the description box below on how to do the master method. But I wanted to point out that it's card counting. So basically you're, you know, you're shuffle, 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 shuffling. You know, what's the question? What's the question? What's the question? Right. And then you start to uh, count cards. I count by three. I believe Michael counted by three. That was his family number. Three is my own personal number. So that's why I use three, but you, you know, you could use anything you wanted to, right? Um, so I count by three, and then you look for one of the master numbers. So it's just, you know, here's four. So that's a master number. So that goes up, and then you take the next card. If that's a master number, which this is, you take the next card until you don't get a master number, <laughs> which in this case you get four of, which doesn't happen, I don't find happens a whole lot, uh, just in experience wise. So then you keep going and you look, hey, nope, not a master number. Nope, not a master number, not a master number. Not a master number. Let's see if that's all we're gonna get. Uh, master number, the house is a master number, so we pull that, we pull the next card. Now, the coffin is a master number, but it is a paw, is a stop. And so you don't pull another card out the way that I was taught. Again, I mean, everybody's got different ways of doing things, but the way I was taught, that's a stop. And for me, in terms of experience, it's this is the message, and then it stops, and then it's almost like a new section, a new message starts up. I found and experienced that very much to be the case. So then I continue about my business uh, looking for any other master number. So 11's a master number. I set it off. Whenever there's a coffin, I set the next cards off a little bit. And I pull the next card. That is not a master card, so I don't take another one. And then we have that one. And then we have 16, which is a master number. So I take that and take the next card, okay? And then uh, I, you turn the deck over. You don't shuffle it because as you've taken cards out, it of course shifts the orders of the cards. You don't do anything, you don't shuffle, you just go through one more time and look to see if any other master numbers want to show up. Twenty-five high honors did, and that is a master number. So you take the next card, which is not, so it stops there. Twenty-five. 
and then there's not three left, so I don't use these. I don't count unless I can do three. I don't use it. So that is the end. All of the cards are on the read on the table, and then I would read these cards, and then I would read these cards, and I would kind of read them together. But I do pay attention to that split because it very often indicates uh, an actual break where this might be answering one part, and then this being answering something else there. So that is a counting method. And again, I will put a link to it, and we'll have the master numbers and all that kind of stuff below. Um, but that is what I would call a card counting. You're not just splitting and laying out cards. You're counting cards to get the cards on the table. I love it. I do this in my shop. It's actually more popular than I thought that it would be. Um, and so I just, it's its great. It's a great method and I enjoy it almost all the time. I do have um, the original. There's not as many Kipper decks out there uh, in the world. Um, I need to make a matching Kipper deck too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so many ideas, so little time, right? Um, there's not as many Kipper decks out there, uh, but this is by far my favorite. It's just got this beautiful tones to it. It's like, a, you know, um, Victorian England, and it's just gorgeous. Uh, the only complaint I have of this is that I wish it was poker-sized. I don't like any Lenore, any Cardamancy-style decks. I do not like to be over-poker-sized. But because I don't read this as a grand tableau for the most part, it's, it doesn't bother me. If I do have to do a grand tableau, then I have to use my original Kipper. So that's a counting method. Um, you can't really do that with Lenormand unless you were to set up master cards, right? And I, could you do that? Yeah, you probably could, but I just, I, I use them differently. That to me is what, for me personally, that's what differentiates my Lenormand reading and my Kipper reading. Um, now, my friend Aitzi sent me this little Piatnik deck called Le Jeu de du Destin Antique, or Fine Afflischkarten Telling Cards. So maybe that's Fortune Telling Cards. I don't know. Um, it's a really sweet deck. She, I think her mom might have had it, but she just never used it, and she sent it to me. And it's really lovely. I don't think that the scenes really have much to do with the playing card inserts. It doesn't seem to be. Although some of them are reminiscent of, um, like there's the sick bed. It's kind of reminiscent of some Kipper cards. But they don't seem to really closely align with anything. When I read with it, I just use the playing card inserts. But one of the things that I really loved was that, excuse me, in the guidebook, which I think either has an English part, yes, I was going to say, or, I because I do sometimes sit with Google Translate in these old decks, I did it with this one, which we'll get to in a minute, um, I don't know where, but it talks about a card counting method of reading, oh yeah, yeah, here it is, they call it the three pile method, but I, I don't, see it as being anything to do with three piles. <laughs> um, oh, so it's taking each knot into three piles of three. Yeah. So I, I took part of it, I guess, from here and didn't go the whole way. You're like, what? Why? Why don't you know what you're doing? I know what I'm doing. I just don't... Um, I, I wasn't sure. I thought this is where I got the idea from, and I wanted to make sure I give credit to where I get the idea from, right? So I don't really use this. I do use this deck, but it's just I would use this as, as basically a playing card deck. But uh, where I do have been using the counting method is with the Sibylla deck. So I have, I should have had it over here. I have, uh, there is a Los Carabillo Sibylla deck, and I have that one. Um, and so I've used it uh, a little bit in the past. Uh, to me, these decks are all very similar. When you look at Lenormand, you look at Kipper, you look at, I'm just holding this as sort of a Gypsy Witch kind of, which is an ex almost like an expanded Lenormand. Um, even card, even decks like uh, Deste, um, they all have a very similar reading style. You are looking at what cards are touching each other. You're looking at directions, what's looking at what, what's moving in what direction. Um, it's much more of a quick uh, cardamancy style to them. So they all kind of read similarly. If you get comfortable with Lenormand or you get comfortable with uh, Kipper, you can cross between them quite easily, obviously once you get comfortable with the cards themselves. Um, 
But so I because I love Lenormand so much, right? Oops. <laughs> because I love Lenormand so much, and because I use and, and love Kipper as well. Now Lenormand's my first love. Um, you know, Kipper would be my second love. But because I love those so much, I really haven't felt the need to dive too much into Sibylla because um because these kind of do what I need it to do. And then I use the Maybe Lenormand with all the cards, which has a lot of the extra cards here. So I just, I just haven't used it. I've used it some, but I don't use it a ton. However, um, Bart, when he sent me my, uh, my test sheets, which are not these ones, this is one I've been using all this time, um, but when he sent me my test sheets for my deck, and this was one of the decks that was in, he sent me with it. So this is an old, this is how uh, Los, Los Carabio, no, this is not how Los Carabio did it. This is how uh, Il Minigallo used to do their decks. Itzy has a bunch of these from her mom, like other different decks and things, and they used to be like this in this gorgeous book format um, and the and it ties on uh, the ribbons tie on the side um, and so you would then just pull your and it, when you take it out it's almost like this just like little book cover it's so so adorable and of course it has Sibylla Original Dell 1890 per Divinair uh, edited Il Minigallo Milano Italy with the stamp which is so awesome so uh, this was on this has been on my wish list and um, yeah so here it is <laughs> and but what so when I got this I was like okay now I you know now I need to start doing some um, Sibylla readings because I'm so excited about this deck um, so I just started doing this counting method that I've been playing around with, with playing cards. Um, not, again, not Lenormand, because Lenormand, when I do a nine card, almost always I'm choosing a significator. Um, and I, again, for Kipper, I just showed you the counting method I use for Kipper. Um, but for Sibylla, and I have been using this method with playing cards, which I'll show you in a second, just so we can, you know, cover all our bases. Um, so... What you do is it's a nine card, because think about it, it's just there's some symmetry there. It's a nine card reading that you're doing, and so you're counting by nine cards. And you can do that with Kipper, too. You can use any number. So I don't know why I'm shuffling this this much. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but I just want to show this to you. So what you do is then you would count out nine cards. Now you could one, two, three, four. I just tend to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's our first card of our nine card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's our second card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's our third card. And you can see where this is going, right? <laughs> uh, there's something so satisfying for somebody who loves cards and loves playing cards. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just want to get to the to the whole thing so you can see what, what happens when you obviously are going to run out of cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You flip the deck just like with Kipper. You don't shuffle. Eight, nine, and there's our next card. And then we keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's just so satisfying. <laughs> And then you go ahead and read your cards. You know, you might be doing um, as above, so below with the kind of what's going on directly here, past, present, future. You can read your corners. You can do anything you want. I tend to read them more in three card chunks. Body, mind, and spirit I just did. Uh, just, just, you know, depending on what the question is. Um, but that is like a symmetry to a counting method of nine cards for a nine card reading. And this works. Um, you can see how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? Um, I do need to do a walkthrough of this particular deck. But you can do this also with playing cards, which is what I've been doing up until I got this deck. I've done a few readings with it this way, and I've just had really on-spot um, um, readings. Now, of course, where's my... Sorry, let me grab a playing card deck. This is gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous deck. It's kind of got gold and coppery colors. I've been really enjoying this. I don't use 
I don't use jokers in readings. I know that some people do, but I don't. Um, and I love it for, again, for playing cards. Because playing cards, cardomancy in general, you're always sit reading in groups of three like that. Like, that's not just a Lenormand thing. That's also generally playing cards are always in threes. That's pretty normal. Just give that a good shuffle. Okay. Oops, that's nine. And again, you could one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. See, I was uh, that makes me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then put it over here. Whoops, that's an extra card. <laughs> uh, put it over here. We'll just. No, no, that wouldn't go. It would be this one. Right. One, two, three, four. But it's not satisfying. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Seven. Flip it. Eight and nine. And you keep going. Two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Slippy cards. And nine. And then you would go ahead and obviously do your reading. So I've been doing this for quite quite a while since I got, uh, since I received, I'm losing decks, since I received this and read this, because I again, I like count, counting methods. Um, so I've been doing this with playing cards, but I haven't really been doing it with, um, again, I have ways of reading Lenormand. I have specific ways of reading Kipper. And so I've been, so since I've gotten this, I've been applying that method and it really works gorgeous. I quite love it. It's a beautiful way, uh, satisfying way to get nine cards on the table. So I just wanted to point this out. If you know of any other like card counting methods, I would love to hear those. Please put those in the comments below because I do really enjoy the symmetry of card counting. And per Personally, the only two like card counting methods of laying cards that I use is that kipper that I showed and then this nine card uh, card counting. But if anybody else uses a different card counting method, let me know because I would love to hear it and give it a try. So if you and if you try this, give me a, let me know how it goes for you and whether or not you also enjoy that symmetry of just bam, 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 two, bam, bam, and it's nine. You're counting nine cards to make a nine card. It's just <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop. Have a wonderful day.